Do you still have the fire on a daily basis to go catch fish as you would in a tournament? Or is there a little bit of a let off? I mean, sure, you want to go catch fish, but yeah, uh, are you still as driven? I'm definitely as driven. I mean, I think there's a different kind of driven in a certain, you know, a, a tournament's only about catching right. a certain number of a certain species of fish. And that leads to you doing things in a way that you're catching, you're, you're going to the spot that you know has fish. You know what they're going to be doing. And doing that day after day after day is a great way to prepare for a tournament. But there's also other ways to do really, really cool things. It's, it's finding like, I uh, these days I have more interest in finding some place I've never fished before in my life. And going there and finding fish. Knowing they're there and you go find or, them. Or not fun. knowing they're there. Yeah, Just, right. Just, you know. And the, the, this fishery is so complex. The more I do it, the less I want to do other places. You know, I used to, in a day I used to run. 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, you know, make a big run to the, these little hot spots that you wanted to fish. And it's a great way of making a day work out. But I'm also realizing now I can run five minutes, four minutes, three minutes and have just the same fishing, just doing things a little bit differently. You know, having the same number of shots, the same number of fish on, on, in habitat I never even considered. So it's like finding little nuggets of gold right, there, right every, around the corner. And they're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. So you're finding new spots after how many years have you been guiding down here? Twenty years. Twenty now. years, yeah. and you're still now you're finding. Still find, and I find more and more. Like this past year, I think I found more this past year than I have in you know the year before and the year before. I mean, there's just so much stuff out there, and so and, much in all species, tarpon and all, and, and all species, yeah, bone fish and and, and all species. I mean, it's just I mean, there's so many variables. Like, I mean, there, tide obviously is a huge one, but fish do certain things with certain wind directions, certain wind conditions. You can only fish certain places when the, the sky is a certain way because you, know, you, you need to see or you don't need to see or you need it slick or you don't want it slick or you want it high or you want it low. And there's so many variables to it all. Right. And, it, you know, I used to run away from those things to go get the specifics. And now I'm just trying to see a little bit. You know, I'm just more interested in finding find a little bit more of a bigger, like a holistic picture of one little area rather than little eventual snapshots of. Also, too, it keeps your mind really going. Now you're connected on a daily basis instead of being an entertainer of your client and taking them to a spot you've fished a thousand times. Right. I mean, I, I think one of the roles of the hard parts about the fishing guide is sort of balancing my personal desires with my client's desires. And I'm fortunate that most of the people I'm fishing with, I fish for years. We understand expectations. We understand each other. I know this guy wants to catch a lot. This guy doesn't need to catch as much. He's you know, happy to see other stuff. But I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis, at the end, I'm trying to like indulge my my intellectual curiosity as much as possible while still catching fish. Right. That's what's going to keep you. Because the, the longevity is going to be right. maintained that I way. I mean, that's the. I mean, that's the real joy in it to me. So it's the big, the biggest puzzle I could ever imagine, and you get to put these little pieces in one right. at a time. And you know, there's a lots and lots of pieces to put right. in there. As they say, the adage is peeling those layers of onion away. Right. Yeah. So I mean, that's what that really drives me. More, I mean, obviously, the catching fish is fun. It's great. Right. And there's some weeks where you're just going out catching fish. But there's other weeks that just somehow they just sort of work out that you're you're catching fish, but you're doing stuff you've never done before. You stumble on it, too. There's, lot, there's lots of stuff you just stumble on. Right. You know, How often are you tying new flies? And I, know, I tie flies probably almost every day of the year. It's just sort of like my wife's always accusing me of being OCD because I just there's times I just have to do it. Like a day's like therapy, like a days I'm not fishing, you know, coming up, I'm not fishing a whole lot in the next few months, but like getting the kids ready for school, like she's making breakfast and I'm just sitting at the fly table table, like whipping something up. A lot of new flies? Sometimes. Yeah. New I mean, they, the flies just is all evolve. I mean, I don't ever, I wouldn't say ever, but I rarely go to the, like the tying desk with this brand new idea. Right. It just you sort of tweak something. You just sort of tweak something. The tail gets a little bit longer. You shift the, you know, color, you shift where you tie something on. It just sort of organically kind of change itself and a lot of it's just trying to do it more efficiently most of my flies like you know i have a really a fly i really really like but i want to be able to tie it fast like at the end of the day i want a fly to be fast because you know if i gotta tie a dozen flies i don't want it to take me two hours i'd rather take me an hour right so a lot of the stuff is removing like i had a conversation with dave skog about fly theory i was telling dave like my perfect flies i start with something i remove everything i can from it have it remain as effective so i remove flash i remove this i remove this wing take away all the pieces that don't matter and you're left with like this a hook and as little materials as possible have it fish as well as where you started and dave was like what, what are you talking about man i'm i'm a i'm a fly tire i i want more I add he wants as more. many pieces in there right so that the guy who's picking up thinks there's no way in the world i'm gonna tie this fly 
and they buy it. So, I mean, obviously there's two extremes of it, but I sort of lean towards the Spartan, you know. Right. I mean, that's, I mean, what I see you in your life, obviously you're very efficient. Yeah, I try to be. 